Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the gold semifinal game here live from Farnham Park. It's the Cheekies versus Mouse Rat. And the first pitch is in for a strike. We are underway. Matt Cowley is the first batter for the Cheekies, who are the visiting team. Joe Hippensteel is in the pitcher's circle for Mouse Rat. This is the gold semifinal. What that means is it's the eighth place versus the fifth place game. The fifth place team is Mouse Rat, and the eighth place seed is the Cheekies. As the pitch comes in, that is ball three and one strike. Tim Taylor calling balls and strikes. There's a strike full count. So what happens in this tournament in the platinum gold section is that the nine teams start out all together. There's a ground ball into left field, and the first batter will reach for Cheekies. Stopping at first base is Matt Cowley, as that ball was retrieved out there by Jack Pyle. So the nine, nine teams play a full round robin, and then after that they, they split into platinum and gold. So. Mouse Rat finished actually fifth in the standing, so top of the gold bit, but just below the platinum bit. Cheek and we should uh, we should also quickly introduce ourselves. My name is Tim Collins, and you just heard from Bob Fromer, and also Niall Gray is with us today. And uh, we've seen some fun action here in Farnham Park so far today. As that pitch is a strike to Steph Bicker. During the break, I've seen a friend of mine who actually plays the main net, and they were the unfortunate ninth place team. So they never got to get into the platinum or gold sections. This ball is hit in the air to right center field, and it is caught. That's the first out. Ian Ritchie making the catch. Defensively, for Mousetrap, they have Whitney Hollis at third, Eric Sanders at short, Andrew Vergara is the second baseman. Michelle, Michelle Einscheid is the first baseman. Katie Keyes is catching. Jack Pylon left. Lucy Groves left center. Ian Ritchie, Ian Ritchie in right center. Megan Smith is in right field. As the hitter, now Chris Bicker steps up. And that pitch is a strike, 0-1. One out, runner on first. The uh, team is called the Cheekies. You might... See that there. Uh, it says Terriers on their shirts. The uh, they are a team from Leeds, and the uh, the Terriers are uh, have always been the Leeds kind of top traveling team. So it looks like they either borrowed their shirts or changed their name for this tournament. Yeah, they were playing on here this morning. I was looking for the schedule, trying to find the Terriers. Like, where's the Terriers? And it's you, Bob, who told me they were cheekies. No, they because they played on here this morning against the uh, Fuzzy Ducks. No need to say who won that game. Yeah, 19 to two. As the wind picks up, that pitch is outside. Ball three, three balls and a strike on Chris Bicker. Grace Gordon is on deck. This ball is fouled. And that's strike three. The ball came up and hit him while he was still in the batter's box. So that's the second out of the inning. As any foul ball on the third strike is a simply a third strike. There's no unlimited fouls. I think that's the first time today I've seen it hit the batter, though. That'll bring up Grace Gordon, two outs, and Matt Cowley at first base. No score, top of the first. That's in for a strike on the first one. Joe Hippensteel. And this is line to left field. It's dropping in front of Pyle. That's a base hit. And it will put runners on first and second. So a single, two outs, and then another single. And that will bring up Rich Woolley. On, on paper, you would think that uh, Mouse Rat are probably favorites in this game. They're quite an experienced team from the Greater London Softball Mixed League. They've played in this tournament before. They've, they've done well. And of course, they there is uh, four places in the table between them. This ball skied to the left side, and it's caught by the shortstop Sanders, and that will be a scoreless inning. Two hits, but nothing else as we go to the bottom of the first inning. This is the gold medal semifinal game. Baseball Outlet is BSUK's preferred equipment partner for all your baseball and softball equipment needs. Visit baseballoutlet.co.uk and they'll get you and your team sorted.
Well, as we are set to play the bottom of the first inning, a scoreless game so far as the Cheekies had a couple base runners in the top half but couldn't push anybody across. And defensively for Mouse Rat, excuse me, they're going to be batting defensively for the Cheekies as they take the field. Jarl Luscombe is pitching, and he's pitching to the catcher, Sunshine Santos. Chris Bicker is at third, John Hart at short. Hunting for your lineup. Yeah, Hannah Buschini. I'm looking for the first names. <laughs> when it's all written on the back of a receipt from the hotel, it's a little hard <laughs> to find everything. So <laughs> Anyway, we're about to start things. I'll give you the rest of the line. Jen Van Dorn is the first baseman. I'll give you the outfield in a minute. There's a fly ball to left center field. And a nice sliding catch by Matt Cowley as he went down to his knees. And that's about as good a time as any to mention the other outfielders. Grace Gardner, Grace Gordon rather, in left. Matt Cowley, who just made that nice play, is in left center. George Stamitz is in right center, and Steph Bicker is in right field. So one pitch and a nice play as Eric Sandness fly it out. There's a ground ball through the middle into center field. Katie Keyes is aboard with a single. That uh, catch on the first batter, I think, was quite a big play because... Um, Mouseback could have come out here and, and attacked and, and got a bunch of runs. I mean, there's one on, one out, but you kind of feel that already the inning is a little bit better looking for the Cheekies than it might have been. Yeah, these games can turn on a dime, as we've seen. Joe Hippensteel sends one deep to center field. Long run for Cowley. He's there short of the fence to make the catch, and that was another nice play as uh, that ball was hit to the deepest part of the ballpark. And Hip and Steel has nothing to show for it. There are two down. I think the uh, mouse rat might want to try to hit the ball somewhere else. Cause yeah. That's two really good plays. Yeah, I noticed that compared to the first game we saw today, that the outfield they had the they had the women and men staggered in the first game, and here they have Cowley and Stamets in the center field area, and then. They're flanked by Gordon and Bicker, Steph Bicker, as the pitch is taken for a ball. Whitney Hollis is the hitter right now. There's another fly ball, shallow center field. That drops in, and it will be a base hit, putting runners on first and second. This is virtually identical to the last half inning. Two outs and two on. We'll see if Mouse Rat can push, push across any runs as Jack Pyle steps up to the plate now. In mixed slow pitch softball, of course, you always have that question, where do you put your outfielders, you two men and, and you two women? There are different philosophies on this. There's a ground ball. That one gets through, and we'll see if they send the runner. Keys around third. She's coming to the plate, and she will score. Base hit, and a run batted in makes it one nothing. Mouse Rat. I've also seen you know, some teams, we haven't really seen it here, and I doubt it's that common, but you have three outfielders and one to play short. So you have almost two shortstops, but so far in the games we've seen, we've had four outfielders straight across. Line drive into right field off the bat of Lucy Grove, and that one is going to bring home a run. <laughs> Some aggressive base running here by Mouse Rat, but they're getting away with it. They're doing a good job on the bases. Yeah, as long as they stay away from the outfield there, center left. Or left center. So there's run to be had. Pyle moves to third. Groves is at first. And that pitch was illegal. It was too high. Andrew Vergara is the hitter. It's 2 0 Mouse Rat, bottom of the first inning. Two balls, no strikes. Pyle at third. Groves is at first. This ball lined through the middle. Base hit. Pyle will touch home plate. Cut off in center field by. Cowley and the throw to third base not in time and taking second base on the backup is Vergara so it is three nothing as Pyle scores and more <coughs> more good base running by Mouse Rat sending the uh, runner first to third and then the trail runner taking second on the throw now Michelle Einscheid 
And she lines one left side, and that's going to sneak through. It's knocked down by the shortstop, but it comes to rest. One run is in. The throw to the plate is high. Two runs have scored. And Eid Scheid is at second base. It is 5-0. And this is the kind of inning I think that uh, the Cheekies hoped to avoid when they had those two nice catches in the outfield with the first two outs. But Nostrad are finding holes and hitting the ball pretty hard. Mind you, the Jets in that previous game where they had those multiple hits in a row. As Ian Ritchie takes a ball. Yeah, they were, but this was, uh, they were only one out away from getting out of this with no runs and all with two outs. The five runs have come across. That one is a strike, one ball, one strike on Ian Ritchie. There's a line drive caught by the oh, shortstop. Lovely. John Hart with a nice leap to his right, and that will end the frame. Nine. Batters come to the plate and five cross home plate, and that makes it 5 0 Mouse Rat. This is the gold semifinal live from Farnham Park. We're going to the second inning coming right up. Hit the pitch is baseball softball UK's Hit the pitch is baseball softball UK's national softball participation program and a great way to bring your organization closer together. Whether you want a single day of softball fun or want to set up a league of your own, BSUK's staff and resources are here to help. For more information, visit hitthepitch.com. Top of the second inning here in the gold semifinal, live from Farnham Park. Tim Collins, Niall Gray, and Bob Fromer with you. Top of the second inning as the Cheekies come to the plate. First pitch is a strike. This is Hannah Buschini to be followed by John Hart and Sunshine Santos. And Buschini flares one off to the right. That one is foul and untouched. One strike. Five two out runs in the bottom of the first inning for Mouse Rat. And the pitch to Biskini. This is popped up foul territory again, and that one is out of the bounds of play. Strike two. Oh, strike three, excuse me. First pitch was in for a strike, so Buschini is out number one. So that'll bring up John Hart, who made a nice diving play to end the last half inning. And he shoots one foul, strike one. I think I might go and move my car in a minute, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rule number one when you're visiting a softball or baseball facility, park as far away as possible. And there, there are signs here warning people about just that. But yeah, uh, of course. Of course, when the parking lot fills up, you don't get a lot of choice. Nope. One ball and one strike to count on John Hart, the shortstop. This ball hits sharply, and that's going to get down into the outfield into left center. Hart is stopping at first base with a single as the ball was retrieved by Lucy Groves. So it's good fielding to only give him first base. Yeah, we saw in the first game that the Jets were just taking the extra base at every possible opportunity. That was a good play by Groves in left center to get it in quickly as Sunshine Santos takes a strike. 0-1-1. Yeah. One, one. And this is a, a small woman, but I think you're going to find she has a lot of power. That pitch is inside, one ball and one strike. There's one out. Run around first base. Swing and a miss. One and two. Hart the runner at first. It is nothing Mouse Rat in the top of the second inning. I wonder where they got that name. There's a pop fly left side called for by the pitcher. Hip and steel makes the play himself. That's out number two. And that'll bring up George Stamets. Stamets is the right center fielder. And this ball is popped up left side. And in fact, the pitcher again, hip and steel makes the catch. And very quickly, the inning is over. Nothing across the board. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Mouse Rat 5, Cheekies nothing. This is the gold semifinal live from Farnham Park.
BSUK's Academy is designed to help young players turn the off-season into an opportunity to become better, stronger, and fitter athletes. With opportunities for both baseball and softball players, as well as elite players through the Higher Performance Academy, there's a program for all skill levels. Information about this year's Academy. Bottom of the second inning, and Megan Smith will step up for Mouse Rat. And she pops this one up, foul ground, and Santos with a valiant effort, but couldn't quite get there. Strike one. You were asking, Tim, the last inning about where the name came from, which so quickly dived over, because their dugout is right next to us, and asked, and they said it's the band name from Parks and Recreation. Which is a show that I, I should have seen. I've heard of it. I've heard it's very funny. Dare I admit to say that I don't even have Netflix? Anyway, here's the pitch. There's a, another foul, another chance for Santos, and this oh. one she caught right up against the fence. That was a nice play. One away. Really Let's well. See if there. we caught that on the replay. She ran right out of your screen, but trust me, she caught it. And that'll make her feel a little bit better after a fairly weak at bat for a good hitter last inning, but she's just made a nice defensive play. And now Eric Sandness will step up to the plate. And that pitch is in for a strike. Oh, the wind picking up right as that ball was released. You wonder what kind of movement effect it had on it. There's a hard ground ball through the middle, and that's into center field. Sandness will take the turn at first and hold on there with a one-out single. When you're a, a pitcher in slow pitch softball, the wind can be your friend, but it can also be your enemy. Yeah. It depends where it's coming from. It depends how strong it is, but with gusts like this, it's going to take the ball where you don't necessarily want it to go. Right, and you also can't really plan for it because the gusts come and go mid-pitch as Katie Keyes takes a ball. That pitch probably started out as a strike out of the hand and blew inside. That one is a strike, and they count one and one. I think every pitcher would tell you a start is a strike, <laughs> regardless of wind or not. Jarl Luscombe is the man out there trying to deal with the elements getting a bit dusty. And this one comes in, a little backspin, and it is outside. Three balls and a strike. Runner on first base. Uh, two and one, I think he said. Yeah. You can see the, <coughs> the wind blowing the ball inside, and I think on the pitch before, he was trying to compensate for that. The ball landed outside. And then the wind didn't come. <laughs> There's the 3-1. There's a little tapper left side. Should be a tough play. The Throw to second is not in time. Everybody is safe. Infield base hit. As there was no chance for Chris Bicker really to make a play. That ball was hit so slowly. And so first and second as Katie Keys reaches. Sandness goes to second base. And now Joe Hippensteel. And the pitch to Hippensteel is hit in the air to deep left field, down the line, way back. If it's fair, it's gone. And it is yeah. fair. Hit the fence and out. Top of the fence. That had some hook to it. It's a three-run home run. And eight to nothing, Mouse Rat now leads. Reminds us of um, who was it, uh, David Lee for the, the yeah. Jets in that previous game. Pretty much put it there. Yeah, this time... We had a very perfectly clear view. Let's watch a replay of this. See the pitch come in, and he got all of it. The only question was whether it would be fair or foul. Tim Taylor, the umpire, running out, standing right over the line, and he was in perfect position to make that call, and three-run home run. There's a hard ground ball to the shortstop. The throw to first base is a little bit off line and gets off the glove of Jen Van Dorn. So John Hart unable to make that play to first base, and that allows Whitney Hollis to reach. Fortunately, there's no other runners on bases to penalize them for that. Yeah. So still only one out in the inning. Eight to nothing in favor of Mouse Rat. And Jack Pyle will now bat. We will have the Platinum Final after this at 4 p.m. Here's the pitch to Pyle. This one is drilled, but this is going to hook foul. foul. Yep. Quite a bomb, but the wind is blowing in that direction as well. So it's a long strike. The uh, other semifinal in the gold division going on simultaneously with this one has the Itch and Knicks from the Solent Softball League against the Pyros from the East Midlands League. So the winner of this game, which at the moment is looking like it might be Mouse Rat, will play the winner of that game in the gold final. 
0-1 pitch to Pyle. That's a strike, 0-2. There's one out in the inning, runner on first base. This one hit in the air to left field, and it's going to drop in there for a base hit, and it bounces over Grace Gordon's head and rolls to the fence. Runners will be, well, they're going to send all the way to the plate, and Whitney Hollis comes all the way around to score on that. That makes it 9 nothing, and Pyle ends up at third base. It looked like Hollis was being held, and then at the last minute they decided to send her. So it's 9 nothing. And that, that, that was a difficult bounce out there for the left field. Yeah, the outfield is hard. It's been baking in the sun as Lucy Groves takes a strike. I think even someone over six foot would have had trouble yeah. with that one. It really did bounce. Yeah, that was, that was an illegal pitch. One ball, one strike. Lucy Groves had a nice line drive into right field for a base hit her first time. That got the, sto the scoring started in the game. And now she pulls one to third, and it gets past Bicker into left field. Pyle will score. That makes it 10 to nothing. So Groves again hitting the ball hard. And this one was more or less right at Chris Bicker, the third baseman, and he tried to field it to his backhand side, and it got under the webbing of his glove. And now Andrew Vergara will step up to the plate. Still only one out. Line shot, center field. That is going to find the gap, and it's going to go all the way to the fence. Groves racing around second, headed to third, and she's coming around third. She's going to score, and Vergara is at third with a triple. That makes it 11 to nothing in favor of Mouse Rat. And a bit like the first game that we uh, broadcast before, the stronger team here is pulling away from the, the weaker team, or at least the team that's lower in the standing. Yeah, I'm guessing the Cheekies wish, wish they had a big cat to take care of the mouse rat right now. As Einscheid takes a ball. This is popped up and playable for Santos. She makes the catch. That is out number two. And unusually, both outs in this inning have been pop-ups to the catcher. Yeah, oh, well that was also... The first one was a while ago, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was actually... That was eight hitters ago. As that pitch is a strike to Ian Ritchie. Ritchie is hitting that one in the air to right field, and it drops in. That'll bring home another run as Ritchie with a single, sort of plopping that one in front of the right fielder, George Stamets. That makes it 12 nothing, And now the 10th, now the 11th batter of the inning. Is Megan Smith. It's the first person I've seen batting left-handed. Yep, this is, yeah, you're right. It's the only lefty we have in, uh, in this game. That uh, pitches a strike. Smith started the inning by hitting that pop-up to the catcher that we talked about. There's a swing and a miss, strike two. Zero two. This ball is popped up to left center field, playable, and the catch is made by Matt Cowley to end the inning. But it's a very good one, and we're going to go to the third with Mouse Rat leading the Cheekies here in the gold semifinal by a score of 12 to nothing. Baseball, softball, UK's popular Baseball's Coming Home t-shirts are now available online and at Farnham Park. Visit BaseballSoftballUK.com and click the home page box or visit Home Plate Bar and Kitchen at Farnham to get yours today. We are back for the top of the third inning. It's 12 to nothing, Mouse Rat leading the Cheekies. And this is Jen Van Dorn, and the first pitch was illegal from Joe Hippensteel. Jen Van Dorn, Jarl Liskum, and Katie Jessup, they have a 12-person batting order. This ball is popped up into left field, playable for Pyle, and he's under it to make the catch. Van Dorn is out number one. Yeah, it's really high edge, long time to wait for that one to come down. Routine catch. Well, to give you an idea of how 
frustrating the first couple of innings have been for Cheekies. This part of the order, Van Dorn, Luskum, and Jessup have not batted yet. And it's already 12-0. We're in the third inning. Here's Jarl Luskum, the pitcher. There's a ground ball to third. Knocked down by Whitney Hollis, but she decides not to make the throw. Once she made that initial bobble, there was probably not much of a chance. So Luskum is aboard. A little bit of frustration out there by Whitney, but uh, she knew there was no point in making things worse by throwing the ball away. So that'll bring up Katie Jessup. That pitch is ball one. Jessup is in the batting order, but she's not playing the field. And that ball is hit in the air to right center field. Right at Ian Ritchie, who makes a nice catch. He was backpedaling just a little bit, but he made the catch for out number two. And now the lineup turns, o turns over for Matt Cowley, who will step up to the plate. The problem is some of these high hits, uh, Tim, is it's holding up in the air. The wind's holding it up, giving the fielders a lot of time to get in position. Yeah, they've, they haven't had to run very far to get any of those fly balls. That pitch was a strike to Cowley. Cowley made it as far as second base his first time. There's a chopper to the left side. Hollis fields, throws to second, and it is in time to get the force. And a good play as Whitney Hollis recovers from the initial error she made earlier. Cowley makes the third out, and we are going to the bottom of the third inning. 12 to nothing, Mouse Rat over the Cheekies. This is the gold semifinal game live from Farnham Park. Baseball, softball, UK's popular Baseball's Coming Home t-shirts are now available online and at Farnham Park. Visit BaseballSoftballUK.com and click the home page box or visit Home Plate Bar and Kitchen at Farnham to get yours today. Bottom of the third inning, 12 nothing Mouse Rat over the Cheekies, and for Mouse Rat as they come to the plate. It's the top of the order, Eric Sandness. Looks at a strike, Sandness, and then Katie Keyes and Joe Hippensteel against Jarl Liscombe. There's a hot shot right between Liscombe's legs and into center field. Sandness is at first base with a single. That was hit very hard. The wind is really gusting right now. There's a real difference between the two teams. The uh, mouse rat hit the ball much harder than Cheekies do, and um, Cheekies aren't getting much chance. Katie Keyes hits a comebacker. Luscombe throws to second for one. The return to first is in time, a double play. Nicely turned. Luscombe to John Hart to Jen Van Dorn. And there are two outs, a 1-6-3 double play, I guess, if you're scoring at home. Very nicely turned, and that uh, makes the inning uh, obviously a little bit better for the Cheekies. Of course, they had two outs in the other inning, didn't they? And then all the runs came. Yep, and Joe Hippensteel, oh. swinging left-handed, pops one up, foul ground, Santos under it, and could not quite get there. Well, yeah. There was a, a flurry of activity on the right side as... Uh, Hippensteel was running down the line and the pitcher was running from the mound trying to cross in. Everybody's running after the ball and literally just fell between her glove and her free hand. And literally that tiny little gap. She went a long way to yeah, get it. Yeah, she really got over there quickly. This ball grounded down the first base line off the glove of Van Doren. Trickles into foul ground. Hippensteel on his way to second base. He's there. He's on his way to third base. And he's going to stop there. He nearly tripped as he was shortening up before he got to the bag at third. So Hippensteel turns a ground ball to the first baseman into a uh, a trip almost all the way around the bases. He's at third. Two down for Whitney Hollis, runner at third base. Swing and a miss. Strike one. <laughs> there's a there's a healthy level of competitiveness between these teams. You know, all these teams are they definitely want to do well, but it is also very very good natured. There's a lot of smiles, a lot of laughing taking place. That ball fouled back, strike two. The British softball in the end is a small community. I mean, everybody knows everybody else. They play each other in tournaments all summer. It's a very friendly, very really welcoming environment. That's, I mean, that's probably why it has so many teams in so many leagues. There's a pop fly, left side, Bicker making the call, and the catch to end the inning. 
So that's a big achievement for, Mouth, for uh, Cheeky as they managed to hold Mouse Rat without any scoring. Yeah, that double play certainly helped. So can they score some runs themselves is the uh, question now. That is. We will find out. We'll be right back. It's 12 nothing Mouse Rat. Baseball, softball, UK. Looking to promote your business to thousands of baseball and softball players each year? New sponsorship opportunities are available with Baseball Softball UK, including great new signage at Farnham Park. Advertising with BSUK is a home run for your company, so get in touch today. Speak to a commercial team member for more information. Top of the fourth inning. As the Cheekies going to try to dent the scoreboard somehow. They are trailing 12 nothing. as Joe Hippensteel is dealing with Steph Bicker and then Chris Bicker and Grace Gordon, 2, 3, and 4 in the lineup for the Cheekies. There's a ground ball back to the pitcher's circle, and the play to first is made by Hippensteel. One away. Just going back to point what you say, both say in the last inning about the friendly nature. When I used to play, if I couldn't get in with my local team, I used to go to tournaments scratch for any team I could. So you get to know so many people from different clubs. I mean, a lot of people I last played with years ago are playing for different teams here today. Here's Chris Bicker. That's that's also true throughout Europe. Bicker takes a strike. I mean, even just within the European community, there's a lot of people that know each other, whether it's baseball or softball. It's a very small community. I mean, the London series between the Yankees and Red Sox, I think I knew about 50 people from seven different countries that were there visiting. Meanwhile, Bicker has taken a couple of pitches and the count is two and one. There's a chopper right side foul. foul, foul. Waiting for Tim Taylor with a laugh. He was waiting until somebody touched it before he called it fair or foul, but everybody knew it was gonna be foul. And, you know, even the communication with the umpires seems very good-natured. It's, it's really a great vibe. Two balls and two strikes to count to Chris Bicker. That one is short. Yeah, no, Tim's a good umpire. As a comebacker fielded on one hop by Hip and Steel, he shovels it to first in time. Two down. That was a nice play. It was slightly more difficult than it looked. Um, the ball comes off the surface very quickly. I've, I've been in countries where umpires are can be fairly officious and fairly aloof from the players, but that's never been the case here. And of course, many umpires have, are also players or have, have been players. Well, if you're a player and you get upset at an umpire, I highly recommend you try umpiring. As Grace Gordon hits another comebacker, that's three putouts this inning. They were all 1-3. It's a one, two, three inning, in fact, for Joe Hippensteel, and we're gonna go to the bottom of the fourth with Mouse Rat leading the Cheekies 12 to nothing. Looking to promote your business to thousands of baseball and softball players each year? New sponsorship opportunities are available with Baseball Softball UK, including great new signage at Farnham Park. Advertising with BSUK is a home run for your company, so get in touch today. Speak to a commercial team member for more information. To the bottom of the fourth inning we go. It is 12 to nothing as Jack Pyle will step up to the plate. And then Lucy Groves and Andrew Vergara He's been hit to left field and center, isn't he? Or left center. And well, he lines one right over the third baseman, Bicker's head into left field. And he's going to take the turn and try to head to second base as that one also got past the outfielders and went all the way to the wall. Pyle's going to try to circle the bases, and he is in there. 13 nothing. Jack Pyle slamming into the fence. <laughs> Should we tell him it's the wrong camera? Yeah, the, unfortunately, you went and <laughs> posed for the camera. And <laughs> now that ball got past Grace Gordon in left field and rolled to the fence, and Pyle circles the bases. There's a rocket foul off the bat of Lucy uh, Groves. It's a bit morale sapping, I think, for the Cheekies. I mean, what should have been a single, double at most, suddenly becomes another run. 
That pitch is a ball, one ball, one strike on Lucy Groves. Well, defense is the hardest part of this game. There's a grounder, the third. Bicker throws across on a bounce, and it's in time. Good play by Chris Bicker. He had to move to his left and make that throw in a timely fashion to first base. He got it on a bounce, and Jen Van Dorn with a good pick on the back end. And that is the first out of the inning. As Andrew Vergara steps up to the plate and skies one to left center field. That ball is off the glove of George Stemitz and drops to the ground, and that will put Vergara at second base. I'm not sure because I was unsighted, but I got a feeling they were deciding between themselves who was going to get that. Yeah, one thing you don't want to see is collision in a game like this. Yeah. And uh, Stamets was over there, got the glove on the ball, as the wind is now really kicking around. I'm sure you can hear that. Michelle Einscheid hits a one-hopper to short. The throw to first is in time, and now a throw across to third over there is not in time. So the second out is recorded at first base as Einscheid grounds out to the shortstop John Hart. But good base running, Vergara moves up. He waited for Hart to make the throw. That was also nicely turned, even though they didn't get the out at third. You know, there was no surprise there by Jen Van Dorn. She knew exactly where to throw the ball. Made a good throw, just wasn't in time. As Ian Ritchie steps up to the plate, and the wind is uh, a couple notches higher than it was. There's a pop-up on the infield. Bicker calling for it and makes the catch to end the inning. So all in all, only one run crosses. Yeah, another good inning for the Cheekies in the sense that um, so they've now gone two, two innings, allowed only one run. The only problem is they were 12 runs down before that, so the score now is 13 to nothing in favor of Mouse Rat. And the question really is not so much can Cheekies win the game, but can they score any runs? Well, we will find out. We're coming back for the top of the fifth inning. This is the gold semifinal live from Farnham Park. Joe Hippensteel working on a shutout. It is 13 to nothing as Rich Woolley steps up and that is the fourth ball in a row grounded right back to the pitcher's circle. First you, out. You don't often hear that phrase as slow pitch softball working on a shutout. Certainly not, <laughs> not in the fifth inning. Exactly. But that's exactly what's going on here. Uh, one pitch, one out. Hannah Buschini now at the plate. Let's see if they can forget the shutout, try to hit it past the pitcher. Here's the pitch on the way. That's a ball. After Buschini, John Hart, and then Sunshine Santos, should anyone reach in this inning. There's a swing and a miss. One out in the inning. Top of the fifth. The Cheekies had their best scoring opportunity, actually, after the first batter of the game, except oh. this is lined into right field. Throw to first base is not in time. That's a base hit. As uh, the right fielder, Megan Smith, trying to throw behind the runner to Michelle Einscheid, the first baseman covering. But Buschini is on with a single. And that's one of the best hits they've had. That was a line shot into right field. Yeah, perfectly placed. So now John Hart at the plate. And this one popped up off the end of the bat. Foul ground and... Yeah. Caught by Whitney Hollis. That is out number two. I think the problem is they've had a lot of swings at these first pitches today. I don't know if that's nerves or something or what, or frustration. I always used to like to take a pitch before I'd even swing at anything. I definitely think in slow pitch, one of the hardest things to do as a hitter is to be selective and swing at your pitch. As that one is in for a strike to Sunshine Santos. If you get over anxious, there's nice. a ground ball that's going to trickle off the glove of the shortstop Sandness and everybody is safe. So two on, that's a good piece of hitting from Sunshine Santos. And uh, Cheekies now have a runner in scoring position. So Second uh, one in the game. Let's see if they can cash that run in. So George Stamets at the plate. No pressure. <laughs> there are two outs in the inning. Here it comes. 
That one is a ball too deep. So Santos, the runner at first, Buschini is at second. Not that this will happen, but should he walk, of course, that would bring a run in. Well, you think in a situation like this, he might actually be up there taking. With this wind, you never know if the pitcher can throw a strike. Instead, he lines a base hit into left field. Stopping at third is Buschini. The bases will be loaded. No reason to get thrown out at the plate when you're down by 13. And so a solid single for Stamets. And now Jen Van Dorn with the bases loaded and two outs with a chance to get rid of that golden goose egg on the scoreboard. So just find a hole. That's a strike. That was a perfect pitch from Joe Hippensteel right in there. Mm. This one is high <laughs> in. <laughs> that one the one jinx him of that one. <laughs> that was you, less than perfect. He was expecting that jet jet blast to come in. Oh, gosh. And swinging in a pitch that was a little bit high. Jen Fenzorn fouls it off, one and two. Maybe a little bit of that over-anxiousness. Mm. Mm. Gestures to her dugout, who I think were asking the same question. <laughs> Everybody with a smile on their face. Pop fly, shallow left field down foul. the line, and foul out of the reach of all of the fielders. That was in the Bermuda Triangle down there. And the uh, shutout is intact. Yeah, it's strike three. As it's the third strike on the foul ball. So we're going to go to the bottom of the fifth. It is 13-0 Mouse Rat. This is the gold semifinal game live from Farnham Park. Baseball Outlet is BSUK's preferred equipment partner for all your baseball and softball equipment needs. Visit baseballoutlet.co.uk and they'll get you and your team sorted. Coming back to Farnham Park, where the Mouse Rat leading the Cheekies by a score of 13 to nothing. This is the gold semifinal game. The winner of this game will take on the, the winner of the other game that's taking place over on the other field right now. As Megan Smith is up there, takes a ball. The other game being between the Itch and Knicks from Solon League and the Pyros from Nottingham. Pyros would, have, Pyros would have hoped to have been in the Platinum playoffs, but they just missed out amongst that five-way tie. There's a pop fly left side, and Chris Bickert makes the catch. That is the first out. I have a feeling she popped out when she was last at bat as well. She hit two pop-ups. Uh, she popped up to the catcher. That was one of them. So now back to the top of the order. Eric Sandness will step up. After Eric Sandness, Katie Keys, that one drops for a ball. 13-0. This ball lined into the spot between second and first into right field. Sandness, after a bobble, going to try going to second base, and he jogs in there easily. So even up 13 runs, not stopping uh, with the hustle there as he saw the momentary bobble and decided to take the extra base. It's always a decision, is it? Do you, do you start cruising because you know you're pretty much in the final, or do you keep going? I would rather just keep going, keep that momentum going into that final. And plus, you know, I think they would like to get to the mercy rule if they could. Katie Keyes drives one to left center field. This is right at Matt Cowley to make the catch. Yeah, it's about the third or fourth catch he's taken today. And a good throw into third base yeah. to make sure there was no tag up on that play. Yeah, he made a perfect throw to Chris Bicker, the third baseman because you know that Sandness on second base was ready to go. So that's the second out. And now Joe Hippensteel swings and sends a fly ball deep to left center field, back near the fence, and it is up against the base of it. That will bring home a run. Hippensteel stops at second base. It is 14 to nothing as Sandness crosses home plate. And Hippensteel is at second. It look, looked like that might be a catch. I, think, I don't know if the wind took it over his head, but... Um, I honestly thought he was going for a home run. Yeah, I thought. I think maybe Cowley thought it was going to go over the fence as well. So now Whitney Hollis at the plate. And that pitch is a ball. Hippensteel on second base. Two down in the inning. 
That's ball two. Hollis has scored two runs, two for three. And the pitch, that's ball three. And I think the wind again is taking the pitches inside. Yeah, there's been moments when it's been very calm. And that's a strike on the outside corner. Hollis is like, okay, I'll take it. Three balls, one strike. And there have been moments when it's been relatively still as far as the wind is concerned, and then there have been sudden blasts as if a plane is taking off. Ground ball into center field. That gets through, and around third hip and steal, he will score easily as the ball was bobbled out there by Stamets. So that makes it 15 to nothing here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Hollis at first base, still two down. Now Jack Pyle at the plate. Yeah, if he uh, hits a home run this time, he needs to look at the right camera. <laughs> well, I guess I can put it on this one here. That's the shot that goes right down the line. The pitch to Pyle, that's a strike. One ball and one strike on Pyle. Expect to see him put it left field again. Oh, a swing and a foul oh. tip, and it is yeah. caught. But it's a foul oh. ball. He's going to call it a foul ball. Good it work. Foul tip. It went straight back into the glove of Santos. She juggled it. So that's the second strike. And he lets up on the swing and dunks that one into left field for a hit. That will put runners on first and second. You can see he really cut back on his swing on that one. Yeah, not so much power. Didn't want to foul another ball off. It's been an interesting uh, day behind the plate for Sunshine Santos. Yeah, she's really uh, been all over the place. She made did, a couple nice plays. Did really well on that. I, you almost felt like she should have given her the out just for the effort. There's Lucy Groves, a comebacker, and that one gets through into the outfield. Around third is Whitney Hollis. She will be held there. Throw to second base was not in time to get Pyle. And so the bases are loaded for Andrew Vergara. So we saw the mercy rule in the last game, and that was at 19 to 2, I believe, right? So what is exactly the mercy rule? Bob? I'm slightly confused about that. Pitch is a strike. I mean, one would think maybe it's 15 after 5, but that's where we are right now. You would think that, yes. Pitch was a strike to Vergara. So we'll just keep playing until they tell us to stop. Here it comes. This ball hits sharply. Grabbed by the shortstop on one hop. He steps on the bag. That's John Hart making the play. That's the third out of the inning. And all in all, after all that, only two runs scored. They did leave the bases loaded. It's 15 to nothing. Uh, going to the top of the sixth. And so we'll be right back. And in fact, we won't be right back. No, so no. That was the umpire, Tim Taylor, coming to double check the score. That, in fact, is the ball game. So yeah, they the, should have the game should have ended as soon as the run scored. Exactly. But so <laughs> no harm. No harm, no foul. We got to see some fun plays. We almost saw Sunshine Santos make that nice catch on the foul tip. And the game is over, 15 nothing. So Mouse Rat will be in the gold final. And again, that's not a surprise. They've, they've been there before. Um, clear, clearly a, you know, a better team, more resources in the Cheekies. But um, it'll be interesting now to see who they play in the, the uh, gold final. It'll be either Itch and Knicks or Pyros. We don't know that yet. But uh, whoever it is, I think it's going to be a good game. Yeah, and also, just so you're, in case you're wondering and watching at home, will that game be broadcast? The sad answer is no, and the only reason for that is that we can only set up the broadcast on one field at a time, and the gold final will be taking place at the same time as the platinum final. And uh, that's on this field, so we're just broadcasting from field one. Perhaps someday in the future we'll be able to broadcast all of them oh, at one time. I'll but just go and stand there on my mobile phone. I'll yeah, use my sure. data and just go on yeah, there. Sure. Why not, eh? <laughs> You could do but that. The thing is, yeah, we can't broadcast that, which is such a shame, but... We've got such a mouth-watering platinum final to look forward to. The two best teams this weekend. It's going to be fun. It's always been fun. So uh, Before we get there, I think just a note to say that Joe Hippensteel um, kept his shutout. Yes, that's true. Very unusual in slow pitch softball. And uh, so a good performance all around defensively by the mouse bat, but also by the pitcher. That's true. Yeah, credit Where credit is due. Thanks, Bob. So uh, my name is Tim Collins, along with Bob Fromer and Nal Gray. Thank you very much for tuning in. Tune in at 4 p.m., so roughly 26 minutes from now. Those of you keeping your spectacled ticking timepieces at your disposal, <laughs> you can uh, follow along closely. We will be with you for the Platinum Final Game, which will be between the Jets and the Fuzzy Ducks, right here.
from Farnham Park. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we'll see you very soon.